I'm Meredith Blackwell, and this is Rob Sampson, and we're at IMC 11 in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and we are doing an oral history of mycology. And our first interview is with each other, and so that will be sort of a test for the system that we're using. Our videographer, Dustin Howard, is all ready to go. So, what I'm going to do is say that Rob and I have known each other since 1976. We met in Gainesville, Florida, but I want Rob to tell me about his life before that momentous event. Where um, were you born? <laughs> I was born in Indonesia, in Bandung, in the island Java, and uh, my parents uh, were uh, in fact Dutch. In fact, my, my father was uh, Indonesian German, and my mother was Dutch Chinese. Uh, since they had the Dutch nationality, uh, they had to uh, go out of the country in 1950 uh, because Indonesia became independent. So that was a very dramatic uh, leave because we had to go by boat from Indonesia to Holland. And just imagine they couldn't prepare that, that trip. And we arrived in Amsterdam, in fact, during the winter. What year? That was in 1950, September 1950. Mm. Uh, my father was in fact in the army, the Dutch army in Indonesia, and uh, he became uh, another position in the uh, Air Force in, in Holland. And we moved to the southern part of Holland. I believe between the farmers in a very small village. Near Master? No, no, it was uh, near Breda. Okay. And, uh, which was uh, really uh, interesting because we were the first, uh, let's say, people they have ever seen from another country. <laughs> and I remember the first day when we were in the house, all people came out and uh, had to watch how these uh, uh, Chinese Indonesian look like. It was very strange. But we grew up there and I had a very good uh, uh, time there. I went to school there. And then after that, I went to university, uh, first in, in Eindhoven to do a chemical study, but I found that biology was much better. And uh, I moved to Utrecht. And in Utrecht, I did my master, my bachelor, my master. And uh, after my master, which uh, one part was in the, uh, uh, on, on fungi, was just by accident, I, I came to, uh, to the CBS, the Central mm -hmm. Road Swim Cultures, which is now called the Westerdijk Institute. And uh, I had uh, just one project to go and I went to Barn. And uh, I was very lucky because at that time, Dr. Van Aert, the director, just uh, got a new building from the academy and uh, I could start. And I started with uh, Cunningham Mella. Uh, and uh, I had a great time. I was completely fascinated by the fungi. And when I finished my project in six months, uh, he said, whoa, this is good. We're going to publish this. <laughs> uh, that was in 1969, <laughs> my first publication. So, so were you interested in fungi before? No, no, no. Just no, somebody no. said, do this? And yeah, and I was probably interested in, <laughs> in the environment, but also I was really fascinated by the microscope and by the mm -hmm. beautiness of the fungi. And then in 1969, uh, I uh, finished my master, and then he said, Rob, do you want the job? Okay, <laughs> so he, he gave me a job, and I said, okay, where do I sit? Just pick a, pick a room, we have still four left uh, and empty. So since then I, I, I was at CBS, and uh, now I'm working at the Westerdijk Institute, which is the name change in 19, 2017. In the meantime, we moved to Utrecht, and at this time I worked 48 years for this institute. Woo, so you never really left. I never left, short. but I did several sabbaticals. Mm -hmm. uh, I did my postdoc, and uh, that's where we met. Yes. I did my and postdoc with, with, with Kimbrough. Yeah, I did my postdoc with Gary Cole in Austin. Oh. Okay. And uh, it was a very fascinating time. I think the best time to be educated as a mycologist. Mm -hmm. It's funny because I went to school at Texas and I never realized till today that we are the same. Yeah. And then yeah. you followed me to Gainesville. Well, I didn't follow you. <laughs> I didn't know you. <laughs> so um, uh, I, I got, uh, you know, a, a position or a project with uh, uh, on, on intermediate fungi, Nomoria, 
and there we met. I got a, mm -hmm. a position by Jim Kimbrough, and you were there. That's you worked I was. with uh, Henry Aldrich. <coughs> yeah. That's right. And then I was actually in Kimbrough's lab. Okay. Yeah, then. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I was born on the bayou, what we called the small rivers of Louisiana, South Louisiana. And so I was um, in a place right near the bayou, and uh, we saw poisonous snakes, all kinds of oak trees, poison ivy. So by the time my father returned home from the war, when he was in the Netherlands, uh, that's why I said Maastricht, because he really liked Maastricht, and then also in Germany. So he comes home and he began to teach me the poisonous snakes, because we had lots of them. And poison ivy and those sorts of things. But in school I was never interested in biology because I couldn't spell. And so even in college I majored in things that would allow me to take math instead of biology. So I went, by that time we lived in Lafayette, Louisiana, and so I went to the local college there. And then I went to the University of Alabama because I had decided by that time, after going deep sea fishing, that I really wanted to be a marine biologist. So, at Alabama, I was a, I got my master's in ichthyology, and so I went to Texas. I had intended to go to Tulane and work with the ichthyologists there, but what happened was that uh, I got married instead, and so I had to go to Texas where my husband was going. And I didn't like the ichthyologist there. Uh, we didn't get along very well. He wouldn't take me on the field trips. Mm. So I quit and started looking for a job. And by that time, I had a couple month old baby, my daughter Elise. And it was very, very difficult for me to find a job. But Henry Aldrich, who had worked for Dr. Alex on this grant, um, Henry got a fellowship, so he didn't have to do any work. Uh, except his own. So Dr. Alex hired me rather reluctantly, but it was a wonderful, wonderful time. And one of the first fungi I found was one that was known only from Java. Oh, really? It was a, it was a slime mole, actually, yeah, not a yeah. fungus. Yeah. Yeah, so it was interesting. And it was also there that I isolated um, a fungus from dirt right in the back next to the building in a flower bed, dry, dry, dry habitat. and. I was supposed to get cunning hamela. That's what everybody in the class said. Oh, you can isolate cunning hamela back there. No cunning hamela. But instead, I got this thing that was strange. Couldn't figure out what it was. Dr. Ellix had never seen it. He thought it might be insect eggs. He said, go try to um, grow it anyway. And we grew it out. And it turned out to be something that was called Econosporangium uh, that David Malik described. Oh, yes. yes. Right. Very, very rare, in fact. Yeah, well, it had been found three times in a two year period. Yeah, yeah. Ranzoni in the Sonoran Desert, Dave in, I think it was Nevada in a desert area, and the, uh, the Texas Botany Building. So it was very, very strange. No one's ever found it again. And I've been looking through all of these sequences, people do the um, environmental sequences. It's yeah. not there. So, so you worked, uh, or you, you were also in Austin, and uh, you worked with Alexopoulos, Dr. Yeah. Alexopoulos. Mm -hmm. uh, how was he? Because when I was in, in, in Austin, uh, he was in this very small, very dark room. He was, f uh, in my opinion, very shy, mm -hmm. never came out. But you worked with him. So how was your uh, experience with him? Oh, gosh, he was wonderful. For the first couple of months I worked for him, I was Mrs. Blackwell, <laughs> and I can remember how happy I was the day he let, he called me Meredith, and he finally did after a, a couple of months. But it was when I found uh, this slime mold and some material he had in moist chamber from Mexico, and it was the one from Java. It was called, um, what, oop, 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 it's a different genus. It's Pisarina is the genus name I had forgotten for a minute. So after I found that, and he saw it and it was right because I'd looked through all the picture books of slime molds and it was very distinctive. So I was in with that. But when you saw him in um, 70, when would it have been? 75, 75, 76, yeah. Yeah, by that time he had had several benign brain tumors oh, okay. and he saw double vision. Uh, 
Before that, he had been diagnosed with myasthenia gravis, but it turned out all the time it was the brain tumor. So he was really debilitated by that. Yeah. And he was totally different from when the early days when I was there with him. Yeah. Because uh, wh when uh, I met him, uh, he, he asked me what I was going to do in Austin. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I'm going to study with Gary Cole mm -hmm. on the cuneogenesis of hyphomycete. And he said, well, this is really a very good, nice study. But that was the only conversation mm -hmm. I had with him, yeah. uh, which is uh, a pity because he was an extremely famous man. Oh, yeah. And in yeah. those days, so he just had been so ill. Yeah. Well, why, why are you not uh, proceeding your, your study on, on myxomycetes? Because you were really <laughs> very specialized in that field, isn't it? Well, the problem with myxomycetes is there are fewer than a thousand. Uh, I, I was just more interested in other things. I was interested in insects and, uh, and the things that were associated with them. And so I guess the first things I worked with after that were, were with Kimbrew. Uh, in his lab, some of the little ectoparasites of, uh, of termites that had been discovered by Thaxter, Roland Thaxter, and never yeah. seen until they began to find I, I just remember, didn't we have a, a, a joint paper? We had a paper, paper. <laughs> we did. <laughs> I, Brazilian, I forgot about that. We had Brazilian uh, yeah. termite fungi. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. that was uh, <laughs> published in Mycotaxon, yep. isn't it? In, in 78, it? 79, something. In, I can't remember where it is, but yeah, yeah. I got I it. forgot the name, <laughs> so it's a long time ago. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. Oh, it started with an E, but that's all I remember. So you did also electron microscopy. That's right. I and particularly on ascomycete spores, isn't it? Well, Ascospores. Well, actually, the first was with the slime molds. Dr. Alex believed we should learn to use the latest techniques, and at the time, TEM was the technique. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, that would be one thing. He gave us such good advice. Because he says, I don't know how to do that, but you learn, and then you keep up with the latest technique always. Yeah. And so um, I think later we will interview John Taylor, and that's one thing I want to ask him about. As an electron microscopist, he was very much converted uh, with yeah. the DNA studies he's done. Yeah, I, I learned quite a lot of uh, scanning electron microscopy from Gary Cole, mm -hmm. and uh, when I came home, from my uh, postdoc, uh, my director said, what did you do? And I said, I did scanning electron microscopy. And he said, do you want one? <laughs> I said, okay. No. Yeah, he was, you know, at that time, I think money was no, no, no issue. So uh, we, we, we bought a, a scanning microscope. Mm -hmm. And nowadays I have no time, but there are other colleagues in my institute who are doing this. But uh, what you see in a, a scanning microscope is, is really wonderful. And you're again fascinated by the beautiness of the fungi. They're yeah. very beautiful. And uh, the the problem with it is, though, you learn so much more different things from the transmission. I always like that yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was nice this morning in one of the talks I saw of TEM. Yeah. And it had been used to get information, so that yeah. was good. Yeah, the, uh, there, were, there were congresses where all of everything was TEM, now you see only <laughs> trees. Huh? I remember <laughs> when I worked with Henry Aldrich for one year, he would go to meetings just armed with a pile of electron micrographs and all the EM people would get in the corner and show each other pictures. <laughs> yeah. In fact, what we also have common, I, I, I just <coughs> think about it, is the insects and the fungi. Mm -hmm. Because uh, particularly in the 70s, I worked quite a lot with Harry Evans on uh, enzo entomopathogens. And we described quite a lot of papers so with new And you wrote a book, but it I wasn't with Harry. Uh, yeah, yeah. It with was with Harry, Harry yeah, because yeah. I remember I sent you yeah, some yeah. plates. And, uh, uh, we uh, are just asked for do a second edition. Uh, uh, let's see <laughs> if we have time. So uh, I think this is uh, one thing we, we have in common. Uh, also that the the interrelationship between fungi and, and, and insects mm -hmm. and, and 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 you have done also quite a lot of uh, insect uh, fungus related papers, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And then I was just going to tell you. Actually, lately I've worked on Aspergillus. Could you believe that? Oh gosh, nice. <laughs> I was out in Arizona. Uh, I worked for a time uh, collecting with Bob Gillertson at the University of Arizona. And Gill was very interested in slime moles out there. And the desert is full of slime moles. But we were in one of the riverine valleys. And we were looking at, um, we were sitting down looking through leaves for slime moles because there's some that inhabit leaves. 
and all of a sudden we found an area that was probably 10 by 20 feet and the oak leaves were just covered with what looked like a slime mo. And we started looking at it and it didn't quite look like a slime mo, but we thought, well, we'd better collect it anyway. And it turned out to be a Cinematus penicillium. Whoa. And <clears throat> so I've looked at it. Um, unfortunately, Keith Seifert beat us to it with some Spaniards who also found yeah, the same thing. Yeah, this is the Paloma. Yeah, yeah, Cedicula. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cedicula. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. And so then, though, there is a sequence of it from Arizona. Uh, in Betsy Arnold's herbarium, and lo and behold, it's the same thing. Because last year, after 40 years, we were able to get DNA from it, and one of Kathy Ames' students okay, uh, was, nice. was able to uh, sequence it for us. So yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, regarding the, the uh, insects and, and associated fungi, and, and particularly yeast, uh, you made us some estimation about the number of fungi in oh. nature. Do you think that um, particularly the, the insects are an in enormous, let's say, pool or a source of unknown species? We're still finding new yeast so easily. I don't know for other fungi, but the yeast in the gut, they're just tremendous numbers. Um, we've looked in Thailand, Australia, uh, Panama, Venezuela, uh, and then the U.S., and we keep finding new species. So I don't know. But actually, the, the estimate of 5.1 species of fungi, 5.1 million species of fungi, uh, that was actually based on uh, work that O'Brien had done in Reedus' lab, Reedus Vilgelis' lab, and that was based on soil. Fungi. Yeah, yeah. So of course. you know, it depends on what you look at. Uh, like Kathy Aim was working in a place in uh, in Guyana, I think it was, and if you had looked at that, where there was one tree, dominant tree, and they collected, you know, a hundred species, well, then you would have a very different kind of uh, ratio there. Yeah, 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 yeah. In your career, you uh, educated quite a lot of students, th th which are becoming mm. already now very famous. Also, uh, what is what is your let's say approach when you are going to educate uh, a, a student in mycology? Well, first of all, I should say I really have had relatively few students because I always felt that instead of coming to LSU, unless there was a real reason to be there they should go where there might be more mycologists. But anyway, my way of doing it was what I learned from Dr. Alex. Um, you let people pick a project of their own, something they're interested in, but still within your area. Yeah. 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 Well, my mm -hmm. thing is that they, they should look through a microscope. Mm -hmm. And nowadays it, it, it's, it's sometimes a bit disappointing that biology students come and say, oh, I like to do in mycology, but I don't like the microscope. I said, well, then you don't have a project with me. Because I believe that the biology of a fungus and the morphology of a fungus is equally important mm -hmm. as the sequence. And uh, I've seen so many mistakes with, uh, with uh, biologists only doing sequences and never look to a fungus. Exactly. And, and this is not the way we do. However, I fear that the trend is that the molecular methods are going to, to win from my morphology, even with identification. And I see this particularly in, in, in uh, applied fields like food mycology or indoor uh, mycology that people don't want to look in microscopes and, and try to identify <laughs> at least the genus, you know. They well, just the want problem to do is your fungi are so hard to identify. <laughs> well, I still, but they're important. Yeah, no, no, I agree. And with yeast, though, it's, you know, we have like a hundred traits we have to look at in a sheet. So there was never any question that the students would look at the yeast. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And we didn't really, I wasn't doing electron microscopy at that time. Yeah. But, but no, you're right. And I think you avoid making mistakes because I know of several people who have mixed up DNA 
in the early days. And in fact, when I did the textbook with Charles Mims, there were several problems with that. And if the people had only looked at what they were doing and looking at the specimens as well as the, the but, but still today, you know that several <coughs> genomes are not the species they were originally right. exactly. uh, uh, sequencing. This is, this is really a, a rather serious mistake. Mm -hmm. And this is just you. They have never looked to the, the strain and so on. Yeah, yep. uh, but uh, are there other, other let's say, um, uh, tips uh, to to uh, make a student really enthusiastic mm -hmm. for mycology, or uh, is well, it just in <coughs> in the in the student itself when he's fascinated by the fungus, by by the by the beautiness of the fungi, and of course, uh, if if the project is interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think that if. If they're interested in mycology, it's usually because they are introduced to it. Many people are never introduced to it. Uh, I was talking to a young man called Tim who came here from Kiev uh, on my flight. I was sitting next to him. And he said in Kiev they had to each take a mycology course in their first year wow. of study. And then there was a follow-up where they did a field study, a field camp uh, with mycology. Yeah. So that's a way to make sure people know, because I think we need more mycologists. You know, plant taxonomists, they do different kinds of projects. So they can do more fine-grained stuff. But mycologists, we need mycologists to do more basic But is it not difficult? Because <coughs> uh, I do not see it only in, in the U.S., but also in Europe, yeah. that a lot of mycological institutions are just closed because somebody died, passed mm -hmm. away, and there is no yeah. successor. So there is not a mycology in the, in the curriculum of, of uh, the, the mm -hmm. let's say, education of the st uh, of students. So we are losing quite a lot of mycology. I'm fortunate that I'm working at the Westerdijk Institute because oh, that's a wonderful place. we are in a centrum where everything is happening and uh, we are really well supported by the mm -hmm. Academy of, of uh, the Netherlands Academy. So we are lucky, but uh, I see other institutions where, you know, somebody is retired and then yeah. th there's no mycology left. And well, I think Ober that Oberbankler retired. Did they? They didn't hire a mycologist. No, no, did no, they? no, no, no. And that's <coughs> also in other uh, German institutes or Belgian. You, you, you just. Uh, when see I retired, they didn't hire anyone in no. mycology. Well, that that's uh, something very sad, in fact. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know how to deal with it with this problem. That uh, yeah, when there are five or six vertebrate taxonomist and yeah. one mycologist, it doesn't make sense if you look at numbers of organisms. Yeah. Let uh. me ask you something else, um, because you were in international uh, commissions and so on. Uh, how do you think that this is important for uh, mycology students to be involved in not only science, but also what I all also uh, call a little bit politics? How, how to, <laughs> how to um, let's say, uh, make mycology more prominent uh, mm -hmm. in the microbiology or in, in even in the botany. Now I myself, I'm the Secretary General of uh, IOMS, uh, the International Union of Microbiology mm -hmm. so uh, Society. And I work together with uh, virologists and bacteriologists and we have quite an active uh, division on mycology, uh, which is now also um, using uh, 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 algae and so on, so eukaryotic mm -hmm. microbiology. That's how I got to Prague. Yeah, the so this, this I think uh, is important for students that uh, it's not only a fungus. The fungus mm -hmm. is not uh, by himself in nature. The, this is more broad. It is really microbiology. And uh, Did you attend our session last night? No, no, I didn't. That, that was the topic, you know, it was Fungi and inside fungi were bacteria and inside bacteria were viruses and on and on and on. And um, it's like Jonathan Swift's little poem about big fleas have little fleas and all that. I don't remember exactly. But <clears throat> the other thing is there's so many times people think that a fungus might be causing something. And I think of uh, the grass at uh, Yellowstone National Park in the United States, they thought because it was infected with a fungus, an endophyte, it was able to withstand high temperature. And then someone comes along and finds out, well, it's really the fungus that's infected with a virus. And that's the ones that are able to withstand. And then there are a number of cases with some of the insect-associated things like uh, the plant hoppers. Those are really interesting stories with the genomes now showing 
there are all kinds of different bacteria and maybe viruses. Yeah. So it's very, very interesting. And so you're exactly right. People need to be a little bit broader and keep their eyes open for this kind of thing. Yeah. But um, our speaker last night was very good at, at pointing out the work they had done. So, yeah. Okay. Now, what are you going to do? You retired. I retired. What are well, you doing? I retired already in 2011. Two <laughs> Officially in Holland, you have to go mm -hmm. to uh, when you are 65. But uh, I got another assignment for five years. But in this assignment, I this year, uh, this period, I, I tried to uh, educate or raise uh, my successor, Jos Haubraken. He's mm -hmm. a very good scientist too. So now my assistant is my boss. And I have to ask him, can I go to Puerto Rico? And he said, yes, of course. Oh, did he come? <laughs> no, no, he doesn't come. He, he stayed at home. But uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I still like to work on my college. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it, it's my, my second wife, I always say. <laughs> and uh, it, it's very nice that I, by accident, came into my college and had a chance to work in an institute like the Westerdijk Institute and also had a chance to travel a lot and to see a lot of people, uh, visit the laboratories. Sometimes you see, oh, they're better, but we have this and this and yeah. this. And uh, the network, I think, is extremely important. So uh, if you go as a student to a conference, I think you should really not be shy and talk to the people. Because my, my, most of my colleges are really very nice people, isn't it? Yeah, especially if a student comes up and says, oh, you're my hero. <laughs> <laughs> this happened to me yesterday. <laughs> so we're always happy to talk to any student. So. And I just met this morning a, a young man from Brazil that I talked to in Amsterdam last who's working with Escobopsis. So it was oh. really interesting to find out oh, what he's Oh, is this guy done. there? Because Escobopsis, yeah. I, I, uh, I saw <coughs> for the first time. Andre, uh, Andre, the uh, one from Brazil. Yeah, Andre yeah, Rodriguez. yeah. I, I have to speak with him because uh, I know that uh, we, we couldn't uh, identify that species. And I had to, to uh, read uh, very old German stuff by mm -hmm. Muller. <laughs> and I, I remember that I took the book to, to uh, on vacation. I read the whole German book. Mm -hmm. And I oh then God. I saw that this is the species, what, what we're finding in these termites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really, really interesting story. The ants. ants. Yeah, uh, and yeah, sorry, yeah, ants, yeah. yeah. And uh, there are many species. So mm -hmm. That's right, and he said he's found some new genera too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very, Very interesting. interesting. Yeah. So we learn from talking to students. Yeah, <laughs> well, course. he's no longer a student, but um, he's a young mycologist. Okay. Yeah. Well, this has been fun. Yeah, and very I fun. I think um, we probably should finish up, and we look forward to interviewing people for the rest of the week. Thank you, Meredith. Thank you.